Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number four. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about the definition of statistics and then look at an example of downloading some stock data and performing a few statistical calculations. Now, what R is statistics? What does that mean? Well, what are statistics? That just means a numerical fact, like percentages, averages, probabilities, max, min, standard deviation, all sorts of things. Examples, 5% of the people who took the CPA exam earn a score of 90 or above. That 5%, that's a statistic. The average cost for a Toyota last year was 23,000 bucks, a numerical statistic. The probability that you will get a 6 when you roll a die, well, 1 in 6. There's 6 total sides, and one side has a 1. So what are statistics? Hey, just the numbers. What is statistics? Well, the answer to that question involves the definition of the discipline of statistics, which is what we're learning. So the definition of statistics for our class, hey, statistics is the art and science of collecting, analyzing, presenting, and interpreting data to help make informed decisions. In video number one, we saw the definition that we were going to use, raw data into useful information for decision makers. It's just we're going to use statistical methods. So this is the broad overall definition for what we're doing. But notice it says art and science. Now, you don't think of statistics as an art, but, but there is. And a, and a simple example is, hey, when we're making a chart, we'll have to decide what kind of chart, what colors we're going to use. In chapter two, we'll have to group numbers. And grouping the numbers, we could group them by 10 or 20. That's kind of what it means by the art. The science, that means we're collecting raw data, running tests, and making reasonable conclusions based on our calculations. And we'll see lots of that in this class. Collecting, well, we're going to have to get the data. And then analyzing, converting raw data into useful information. Presenting, that's making charts and graphs and tables. And interpreting, once we present the data and do our scientific tests, we then have to interpret and make a decision. All right, now we want to go click on descriptive versus inferential statistics and talk about descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Now, descriptive statistics, that just means when we go from the raw data and summarize or present it. That means we haven't drawn any conclusion. We just make a easy to read table of information a graph or a chart, or calculate some number like the average, which is a mean or proportion. So descriptive means we're just describing the data in a useful way. Now, inferential statistics, well, before we define that, we have to talk about population and sample. Population means all the elements of interest in a particular study. A sample means a subset of the population. The reason this is so important is because most of the time, we can't get access to all of the raw data for the population. So we have to sample and get a subset and draw conclusions from our sample. Now, as we study throughout the textbook, we'll see lots of methods for doing this. So now, with population and sample, inferential statistics is really the process of using data obtained from a sample to make estimates and test hypotheses about the characteristic or attribute of the population that we're interested in. Another way to say this is take a sample from the population and draw reasonable conclusions that can help to estimate the unknown future. A simple example is if we take a sample of test scores in the United States for statistics tests. We can't say the average for all students is 79. You can say our best estimate for the population of statistics tests for student is 79. So even though we're stuck taking samples, they're actually going to be good estimates. And we'll see later in the class that samples usually are good estimates for the population. But we have to be careful about how we talk and think about samples 
versus populations. All right, now I want to show you an example. Because if we go back to, so we have descriptive and inferential. And we saw our definition of statistics. So I want to go over here and just look at an example. Because we can kind of put this into play, collect, analyze, present, and interpret data, just to get an idea of what that definition means. All right? We're actually going to collect some raw data. We're going to go out to the internet, see if we can find some Yahoo stock historical data. And then we'll organize it in a useful way. We'll create a table, a chart, a few calculations, and see if we can make a decision based on the useful information that we create. So I'm going to go over to Google. Now, there's a couple of good sites for historical stock data. Yahoo and Google Finance are good. Also, bigcharts.com. But I'm just going to try this. Yahoo, just something like Yahoo historical stock prices. This link right here, finance.yahoo, is pretty good. A lot of times, if I can't get exactly what I want at finance.yahoo for stock information, I go to bigcharts.com. But let's go ahead and click here. I don't see the raw data from that link. So up here, I'm going to type Yahoo and Enter. I get some data about Yahoo. And actually, this is already useful information presented. So this website you know, presents a tabular form here and a chart. But I'm going to go over to historical prices. And sure enough, look at that. From the beginning to uh, the most recent date, there's daily get prices. Now, sometimes, and I should just show you this, I'm going to try and copy from the internet. We're going to see that there's a link below. But you oftentimes have to do this. And I want to show you an amazing trick. So I'm going to Control C to copy. Go over to Excel. And if I paste Control V, now there's a bunch of junk. And sometimes there's links and little objects. I'm going to Control Z and show you a great trick. Home, the Paste button. This is a great trick for getting data from the internet. Paste special and say text. Click OK. That's a useful trick for getting raw data from the internet. Now Control Z. Now let's go back over to Yahoo. And the problem with that is we have tons of data. And we'd have to do it over and over and over and over. So luckily, there's a link below, because we want to get all of the data. So I'm going to click on this Download to Spreadsheet. Now you got to be careful, .csv, or down here you can see, see the type, Microsoft Excel, comma, separated values. This is actually a text file, .csv and .txt. TXT, those are the most common file types to exchange raw data between systems. So this is an intermediate step. All right, now I'm going to save this. And I'm going to give it a good name, something like Yahoo Stock Data. I'm saving it to my 210 folder. Click Save. Now we can open this here, or we can go to Windows Explorer. Double click and open it. And you notice that it looks just like Excel. But notice up here, .csv, you may not have your extensions turned on on your computer. But this is not an Excel file. If you start to do things to it, it will tell you that you can't do it. Because even though it looks like Excel, it's a text file. Now later in the class, we'll see how to import these text files into Excel. But here, we're just going to highlight the whole table and copy and paste. Now, how do I highlight the whole table? I'm going to use Control Asterisk, not Control A. Control A is Select All. I don't want to do that. I want to use the keyboard that selects the current table. It'll hunt for all the empty cells and then stop. Control Asterisk, and I'm using Control Asterisk on the number pad. If you don't have a number pad, then you have to use the asterisk above the 8. So it's Control Shift 8. Control C to copy. And now I'm going to go back to my Excel workbook. Control V to paste. Ah, oh, that is cool. So Control down arrow. So like 4,700 records Control up arrow. I want to format this. Control B, our field names always have to be formatted differently. Control asterisk to highlight the whole table. I love Control asterisk. I didn't have to you know, scroll down 4,000 rows and then add a border. 
Now we've done step one, collect the raw data. Now we want to do something just simple here, a couple steps. We want to look through the adjusted close, which is actually convenient. This takes into consideration splits. And calculate the max, the min, the average, and make a chart. So up above, I'm going to say max, min, and mean. That means the average. Highlight these cells, right clicking on the mini toolbar. I'll do more colors and pick our green that indicates a formula. Click OK. Right click mini toolbar and all borders. I'm just going to add some bold here. Equals max tab. Click in the top cell, Control Shift, down arrow, Enter. Because the next one I'm going to do is equals min, Control Shift, down arrow. Enter, and then equals average. Let's add them all up, divide by the count. Control Shift down arrow, Shift Enter to jump back up. So we've done some calculations. Wow, so it was up to 118 at 1 1.66 cents. That takes into consideration splits. And the average over the entire life is 22. So the useful information were creating is just an appreciation for the historical movements in stock price. Now, if I were to make a chart, I don't want to highlight the whole thing. I just want to highlight the date column and the adjusted close. The date will go on the horizontal axis, and we'll do a line chart that shows us the up and down movement of the stock price. Now, we're going to get a little trickier, because how in the world do I highlight both columns? Well, we know how to highlight one column. Click in the top cell, Control Shift, Down Arrow. All right, That does one column. Now, I'm actually going to use my scroll bar and scroll all the way up. And now I need to select this column. But notice it's not next to each other. The way we do that is we hold Control. So this is, this is highlighted. Hold Control and click. Now notice we're highlighting the whole column in a single cell. Now to go all the way down here, you hold Control, Shift, and Down Arrow. That was amazing. So what we did was Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Click, Control, Shift, Down Arrow. Now we have both of our columns. Insert. And we're doing a line chart. I'm selecting the top one. And instantly, by the way, there's not many charts where you can highlight 4,000 data points and have it look OK. Line chart is one of them. Now I'm going to point to the corner and click and drag. Scroll over a bit. We're just creating some useful information, just a history of the Yahoo stock. Now I want to change this adjusted close. So watch this. I'm going to click inside. And now you see that dash. And at the end, I'm going to type a space and type for Yahoo. And then click on the outside edge. Point to the bottom. And I can click and drag. Click on the axis and either right click Format Axis or Control-1. That brings us to this Format Axis. And I have to click on the columns there. That means the data points scroll all the way down. Number, click the drop down, select currency, maybe a 0 and tab. I'm going to close this. All right, so we've done something just basic, right? And if we look over here, statistics is the art and science of collecting raw data. We did that. Analyzing it, we created some useful information. It Presenting newly created information. Well, tabular, well, we didn't really have a tabular way to present all of this data. But this is a sort of tabular presentation. Graphical, we did a chart. Numeric, we did max, min, and mean. Interpreting information, well, we're appreciating the historical movements in this stock price. So we're not necessarily going to come to any conclusions here. One thing I do have to show you, though, is that if you go Control P to print this out for your report, well, look at that. It got the chart because the chart is selected. But what if I wanted all of this? If I Control P right now, one of the beautiful things they added in recent versions of Excel is they combined the Print dialog box and Print Preview. If you look down here, 102 pages. How many people have clicked the Print button and then only later realized that it's printing out all the stuff you don't want? So I want to do a little bit of 
page setup. This is part of the presenting useful information. So I'm going to come over here, page layout. And there's lots of page setup stuff. And I'm going to go right to the dialog box, which has everything. Click that dialog launcher. By the way, these little things at the bottom of each group are called launchers. So boop. Now, we want to print this out. Is it wider than taller? Yes, it does look like that. So I'm going to select landscape. I may come back and, and adjust this later. Margins, I'm going to center it horizontally. Header and footer, simple way to make your printout look nice. I'm first going to select the drop down. And this is a great option, page one of question mark. Now for us, we're going to have one of one. But if you had 10, it would say one of 10, two of 10. Once we select that built-in one, you can see the preview down here. Now we go up to Custom Footer. And now we can have fun. One, two, three sections with a bunch of buttons. We can print out the date, the time, the file path, the file name, the sheet name, even in picture or even format it. I'm just going to put the date. And I'm going to type a space, a dash, and a space. Then I'm going to click the time. That's the code there for automatic date and time. Whenever I print this out now, it will be dynamic. It'll put today's date and the current time. This is all code for dynamically knowing how many pages there are. And then, of course, we can type something like your name. So where it says your name, I want you to put your name. You could even highlight this and go to A for some formatting. Oh, isn't that cool? Whatever format you want, click OK. Now, there were three dialog boxes deep, so I click OK. We can see our preview of our footer there. It looks so nice. Our fourth tab in the page setup is Sheet. And this, we want to limit the print area. So I'm going to pull my dialog box to the side, highlight H one down to something like N11. Absolutely beautiful. Click OK. Now it doesn't matter where our cursor is when we Control P. Oh, that's amazing. Now, I don't like that. I want to make it much bigger. We can access the Page Setup dialog box down here. So I click that. And I'm going to move this up to 200. I'm just guessing here. Uh, 225. Click OK. Oh, that doesn't work. I told you I was just guessing. All right, so 175, click OK. And I can see page one of one. That is looking good. Escape, because we don't want to print that out. So in this video, we saw the definition of statistics, the art and science of collecting raw data, analyzing, presenting, and interpreting to make informed decisions. We talked about descriptive statistics. We can present tabular graphical, and even numerical. And later in the class, we'll do inferential statistics where we take samples and make reasonable conclusions based on our calculations based on a sample. Oh, and I almost forgot. Let's go look at an example that we'll be doing later in the chapters. This is inferential statistics. We'll actually set up a series of calculations based on our sample data. And we'll build a chart. And we'll have a p-test. We'll do hypothesis testing. And if you hit the F9 key, I have the data randomized. And you can kind of see it changing down here. You can see our change, our calculations change, and you can see the chart. So what we're going to do there is we're going to test a machine to see if it's filling accurately. Like, for example, box weight for cereal, right? And right now, our conclusion shows a p-value of 0.07, which is bigger than our alpha, our level of significance. So we can conclude that the machine is filling accurately. But if I hit F9, oh, now our test shows that the p-value is smaller than our level of significance. And so we can reasonably conclude that the machine is not filling accurately. Over here, if you watch, we'll have the p-value is the blue, and the level of significance is the gray. So anytime this is bigger, this is probability later we'll learn, than that we think the machine is filling accurately. If I hit F9, uh-oh. So the gray is bigger than the blue. So it's reasonable to conclude that the machine is not filling accurately. So that's just one example. And we'll do this exact example later in this class. All right, we'll see you next video.